I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Genius, back with you once again, and with the tragedy in Connecticut uh, still burned fresh in all of our minds, uh, we are now at the point in America where we are starting to uh, discuss the event a little bit and discuss maybe what can be done or cannot be done uh, in the future in terms of these events. And, and as I think most of us suspected, uh, one of the big areas of that debate is about gun control. And so uh, if you have been in conversations with anyone at all or you've been on social media the last couple of days, you have undoubtedly seen a little bit of a debate over gun control uh, really explode across the country. All the cable news shows are on top of the whole thing. And, of course, that's not a surprise after a situation like this. This idea, this, this debate seems to come up after every one of these shootings, so no surprise that it's happened. But there is uh, one particular line of argument that I've been hearing an awful lot over the last couple of days, and at the risk of of splitting hairs at the risk of sounding like I'm uh, making too fine a point about something there is a particular line of argument I've been hearing that, that really has bugged me a little bit it's really rubbed me the wrong way and and maybe I'm the only person that's noticed it maybe I'm the only person that this line of argument has stood out to I, I don't know maybe you guys can can message me and tell me if I'm the only one who's seen this or maybe you've noticed it too I'm not sure but in conversations I've had with, with friends and acquaintances who uh, would like a little more gun control, and of course, obviously, you know, I really don't want any more gun control. A lot of my friends do, and they talk about it and so forth, and people I know from across the political aisle, or even people I've seen in Facebook and Twitter and postings that way, there's a certain question that I'm hearing being asked, or a certain type of question that I'm hearing people ask that's bothersome to me. And the questions go something like this. For example, I might hear people say, well, who really needs an assault weapon anyway? Or who really needs a clip with 30 rounds of ammunition? Or who really needs a gun like that to go hunting? It's a lot of different variations on that question. The word need comes up time and again. Who needs X, Y, or Z? And it's not just people I know. It's not just people on Twitter and Facebook who are saying these kind of things. I'm seeing some people out in public saying it now. Uh, Diane Feinstein, the senator out of California who... Uh, was one of the key members in bringing the assault rifle ban uh, up in the 90s that eventually ran out. She's looking to do that again on the heels of this tragedy. And she made a statement uh, just today saying, and I quote from, from Senator Feinstein, who needs these military-style assault weapons? Who needs an ammunition feeding device capable of holding 100 rounds? These weapons are not for hunting deer, they're for hunting people. There's that word, need, time and again. And some guy on CNN, a guy named Don Lemon, I guess he's a reporter over there or something. I mean, it's CNN, so who watches it? Who knows? But I guess he's a reporter or something. He made this statement, quoting from Lemon now, no one needs an assault rifle that's capable of shooting 10, 20, 30 rounds off at the same time to shoot a duck or to shoot quail. It does not make sense. That word need comes up time and again. Who needs an assault rifle? Who needs a clip of this size? Who needs to do this? Who needs to do that? And as I hear that argument, as I hear that question, it strikes me that it's not unlike similar questions that we hear when we're talking about other, uh, other topics in, in the political landscape right now. When we're talking about taxation or wealth or some of these other things, you'll often hear people say, well, the rich don't need all that money, or who needs $500 million in the bank, or you know, who needs a, a house or a mansion with 20 rooms in it? It's become a very common type of question, a very common type of argument, particularly among the left in America. And it strikes me as a little bit uh, disconcerting, a little bit worrying, and I'll tell you why. I would not want to live in a society, nor would I want to live under a government, which felt that it had the prerogative to determine for me what I need for my family and would then prohibit me from going anywhere beyond that. In other words, I think the decision of what I need for my own security, for my own welfare, for my own comfort, not just talking about guns, but in any aspect of life you want to talk about, across any subject you want to mention, the decision of what I need for the comfort level that I would like to have should be mine and mine alone. 
Now, that doesn't mean we'll always agree. Personally, do, do I think I need an assault rifle for protection? Personally, no. But that doesn't mean that I think you shouldn't have one. And if you feel that you need one, I don't, frankly, I don't feel like it's my place to say, no, you don't need that. You need to go smaller. You need to, to look another way. It's not my place to do that. The responsibility for protecting yourself and your family is, is yours. It's all yours. It's not my business. Likewise, the responsibility for protecting me and my family, that's on me. It's none of your business. The responsibility for making sure that you have whatever comfort level you wish to have in life, whether we're talking wealth or guns or the type of car you drive or the type of house you live in or the type of food you eat, any of those things, that's all on you. Society should not have the prerogative or should not feel that it has the prerogative to step in and say, no, 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 no. You have everything you need and we're going to stop you from getting anything more. To me, that's the antithesis of a free society. When we start getting into an area where the people, or worse yet, the government claiming that they are acting on behalf of the people, can tell any of us that we need only so much and not an ounce more, and that they then need to step in and keep us from attaining more or bigger or whatever than what they think we need, then we no longer live in a free society. The most important responsibility that any of us have is the responsibility to protect and provide for ourselves and our families. That responsibility, and this is going to piss off some people, that responsibility, in my estimation, is far more important than any responsibility that any of us might have towards society as a whole. I do not believe that any of us should consider the needs or wants or whatever of society as a higher priority than the protection and the provision for ourselves and our families. That should always be number one. And that's why I'm a conservative. That's what conservatism is about. That very question of should society step in and tell you what you need and restrict you from getting any more, that question is at the heart of the conservative versus liberal debate. That question is at the heart of virtually every political issue we have. And we're seeing it now in this gun control debate that's happening. I know that there are going to be people on different sides of this gun control debate. I understand that. But I really think we need to stop and, and really move away from this anti-American idea that others have a right to limit what they think we need or to limit what they think we should have. Because when we get there, we're not in America at all. That's it for this time. We'll see you next week. This is America's Evil Genius.